Welcome to another episode of The Clever Dev, and today we're going to look at the Material UI card header, and I'm actually going to enable every single prop on it, mostly because I was curious what would it look like if we did that. And so, let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight props, and uh, to be fair, there's actually nine, but if you set disable typography to true, then it actually disables two of the other props, this uh, subheader and title typography props. So um, we're actually only going to do eight of the nine, because that's all you can do. So anyway, we have what looks like a pretty fancy card over here. This is the completed example, and I just wanted you to see it before I uh, scratch it all, and we, we start uh, from a card header that has no props enabled. And I'm going to leave all the rest of the code in place, because uh, it's not specific to the card header, but I'll, I'll remove all eight of these props that are enabled. So let's go over here to our from scratch and and uh, Code Sandbox likes to refresh a lot. So you can see we've got this empty card header over here now. So let's refresh over there and uh, get our card back. And um, so all the code is available if you look in the show details the video details, then there will be a link to a completed version of the sandbox and a link to uh, a blog article that has a full write-up of this code. So with that said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump on in and you'll see uh, even right now, like I've got a snack bar here, we'll have that be opened later when we add some click action but for the purpose of time. And same with the sandal click for the purpose of time, I've already got these in place. And same with some of the styling up here. It's all just kind of an example. Um, so anyway, with that said, let's jump into card header, and I'm going to go through these props alphabetically. So the first one that we're going to add is an action prop. And I'm a little bit bad about typing and talking at the same time, so what we're going to do is uh, do my best to talk and type, but um, this icon button in our action prop, um, it'll let us give it a child component that um, has kind of a norm, uh, default CSS styling that makes it look clickable. So within that icon button, let's actually move that, let's just go ahead and, I like to do my closing braces early on. So let's get that in there. Let's add an edit icon as the child in here. And of course, I've already imported all these things. So, let's see, so far we've got, let's see what that looks like. So here we have already got the first of our prop, of our um, the prop set, this action prop. And we've got this icon button, and inside of it we've added the edit icon. So edit icon is straight from material UI. Uh, let's see where it is up here. So it's in the, the list of icons that material UI provides right off the bat. So, of course, we want our edit icon to actually do something. So let's add a little on click. I always like to pass the event prop, even if we may not end up using it. Um, it gives feature developers options if they wanted to use it. Uh, it's just handy to be able to access the, the event information, like the target and so on. So anyway, simple handle click. So uh, we've got this up here. So that will eventually affect the snack bar that we've got down here. And uh, it'll help open it or close it. And uh, just gives us another place to be able to do that from. For now, not too much is going on with it. Let's look at the next problem. So the next prop is the avatar prop. Once again, going in alphabetical order. And the avatar prop sounds kind of like it's going to um, maybe let us, like maybe it'll be an image or something like that, but it actually, or maybe it'd be an action or something along those lines, but it actually takes a component. Now, probably a typical component to put in here is this avatar component. However, uh, that's not actually necessary to do. 
Uh, instead of closing it this way, I'll just look at that close brace there. There we go. So look, we've got a nice avatar up here. So um, this avatar prop actually is just giving us basically a pre-styled div in here. Let's look at DevTools and confirm that. So yeah, there's our div. And when I say it's pre-styled, I mean Material UI has added this MUI avatar dash root class by default to it. But really, it's just a div that gets placed up here and fed whatever child we pass it. And really, there's no difference with the action prop um, other than that default class that's applied. So if you if we we're looking at the docs, we'd see, or if we had TypeScript enabled, we'd see that this avatar uh, takes, or let's see if I can uh, get it to hover. There we go. Uh, Code Sandbox is helping us out here with the um, type that avatar can be. And so we see the type is JSX element, or if you look at the material UI docs, you'll see that it's of type, that it accepts type node. So really that just means an element or a component. Um, and that's the exact same as action is. Really, the interesting thing with these props is that uh, they're just accepting child elements or child components. So we've got our avatar in there. Now, the next one, the next prop that we'll enable is the classes prop. And that one is common to, as far as I know, every single material UI component because it's a different way of adding styling. So um, I've already got a classes.subheader class, and um, it's a little different in that, there it goes, it's code sandbox meant to catch on, but um, we could use class name prop instead of classes, um, but I picked classes because it's listed in the docs, and um, either one works, but classes lets us pass in an object that has key value pairs, and so we're using classes subheader, which we created up here, which I had previously created. And um, it's just another way of accessing the material UI styling API. So I've passed in this subheader here. So let's get our code sandbox to refresh and see what that looks like. So nothing too much yet, because naturally we don't actually have a subheader in there yet. But we'll get to that pretty quick. So another thing that's pretty common uh, for material UI components to accept is this component prop. Now, not all of them have a component prop, but many material UI components will um, they'll have a, a root element that you can actually swap out for another element, like a, maybe its root element is a div, and you can swap it out for a span, or you can swap it out for maybe um, kind of a utility component like the box or a container. So in this case, I have swapped out the div that's the default for a box component. So let's see what that does for us. So we see our root class, material, uh, MUI paper root. So we're really at the root level here. And then we see that instead of um, just a normal div without any particular styling on it, we've actually got a box component, which itself is a div but it's a div that comes pre-styled with MUI box dash root class, for example. So um, in this case, that gives us a little bit of background color. Oh, and uh, I should mention, so I have tapped into that MUI box root um, global uh, API, styling API that Material UI has. And so I, added the box component, and without this bit of styling in here, the box component doesn't really add any particular visible styling, but it does add those classes behind the scenes. And so, with those classes, then we can target them, like I've done here, with an MUI box root. So it just adds, um, it can add default styling, but in this case it didn't really, but I it added classes that I could target nicely. So we've looked at component, now let's look at the title and the subheader. So I was going alphabetically, but it just makes sense to look at title before we look at subheader. So I'm going to do that first. So our title and our subheader can actually take components. 
but for the title I'm just going to put in some text and for the subheader I'll actually put in a div just to kind of show off what that looks like. So there's our title. See it's pretty small right now but we'll fix that in a little bit. So here let's add that div that I mentioned. That closing div. So now we've got some text on there. I'm a centered title and a centered subheader. But of course they're not actually centered yet, but we'll fix that. So I mentioned before this class is proc and I added classes.subheader. So let's go take a look now that that's actually applying. Um, so all that I had in there was font style italic, and we can see that is applying nicely. Let's take a look in DevTools and see that class being applied. So here we are, we see our subheader class right here. Now it's not just subheader. When Material UI applies a class that's a custom class, then it, um, makes the name of the class kind of random. Like we see this dash 31 here, but we've got that italicized styling on there. All right, so we've got our title and our subheader, but they're not looking like the original example that I showed. But that's because we have not yet added the title typography and the subheader typography yet. So let's get those in here. So I'm gonna do the title typography props right beneath title and then subheader typography props I'll do below subheader. So what these are is uh, it's accepting an object which is going to be props that's actually passed to the underlying typography component in the header here. So let's look at the header again in DevTools. So we see that we've got our, our content section of our header and um, that is a div that contains a span where we can see class MUI typography dash root. And then here's another one for the subheader, same thing, MUI typography dash root. So what you and I think of as a typography component in Material UI is actually a span with this MUI typography dash root class applied to it. So let's actually add these props. So I'm going to add variant h5 on there, not equals, we actually want a colon, this is object syntax here. And then I will add a line center. So like I mentioned, these are being passed through to that span, uh, that typography component in there. And the typography component is consuming these props, interpreting them, and if code sandbox get a good, it's act together then it would apply this h5 variant, so that's like a header uh, header 5, and so that increases the text like we can see now, and I got that center alignment on there. So let's do a similar thing for the subheader. There we go, we finally got our autocomplete right there at the end. Alright, so I want this text to be a little bit smaller, so I will add an h6 variant in there with the proper syntax. So we've got a variant, center align that, and let's see what else we want. We want, I added some color and a little bit of margin at the bottom. And by margin, I just used a shorthand of gutter bottom true. So there we go. That's kind of interesting. We saw code sandbox expand a little when I added that gutter bottom, so I took it off and until it fixed. Uh, shrink a little bit again. You can do it. There we go. Alright. Good sandbox. It's having to think hard about that extra comma. So there we go. I think it's looking like uh, the original example that I showed. So, if I had left that last that other prop, that disable prop on there, then what that would have done is I would have stripped off 
it would have stripped off the um, typography component, or in other words, this span wouldn't have had the same UI typography class on it. And then these title typography and subheader typography props wouldn't have um, done anything because there's no longer in material UI world, no longer a typography component there. And I want to mention too, so we've got the subheader and I passed in a div with text instead of just some plain text. And here we see that div um, actually being nested inside that span. So if I did disable typography, then um, that's when you'd probably want to pass in more than just plain text. You might pass in a div that's got some special styling on it or a material UI component or something along those lines. Um, you didn't, you'd disable the typography if you didn't want that default typography styling and you just wanted to, you had some really interesting styling or component that you wanted to pass in instead. So uh, I really appreciate it. If you subscribe, it really keeps me motivated. And um, I hope you got some good information about the card header and all the available props for it.